Okay, I, I see it, it up. Now. Right. See? You told me. You told me I couldn't mess it up. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> I now can tell by the red dot. <laughs> See, good and thing I asked, I verified. All of them, right? <laughs> 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 you, you want the whole number or like the point? The point as well. All right, guys, let's gather around. Let me kind of give Did you, you turn yours on? Why we're here. I don't have oh. a job. Um, <laughs> not yet. Oh. See? <laughs> Sorry. All right, so. Not important. Um, I will tell you, that this is a, a very weird spot, first off. Uh, but we're in a parking lot. Congratulations, everybody. You made it. Yeah. Um, so, this is where I start withholding information for all of the communication okay. devices. So this is where I will not be giving you questions like what color was George Washington's white horse. You will be mm. getting the answers from your spirit boxes and communication devices. It's actually weird that I kind of gave two communication devices to the parents. Um, sorry, just pointing that out in my own brain, like how the hell I did that. Mm. Um, am I assuming that right? You guys both the parents? Yeah. Okay. I never know. So no, we are. <laughs> 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 so it's like recorded. She looks like you. She looks like me. We're okay, good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Jerry Springer. <laughs> Where did I start the <laughs> so, anyhow, right? Okay, so where the heck are you? You are at the Charles and Eliza Pinckney Mansion. Okay, so here's how the layout is. The mansion actually sat in the front of the space facing East Bay Street. Eliza's garden was lined up with five church restaurant, came all the way across, and we are standing in the service of place on the um, so quarter for the home. Um, so, with that said, who the heck were these people? Charles and Eliza had a son named Charles, and they had a nephew named Charles. That's three different Chucks. That's why we look for secondary clues, because I need to know which one is here, so we know how to address them. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. Perfect. Especially the communication devices. You guys are really on point. Um, so, the son and the nephew were signers of the Constitution for South Carolina. That's a big deal for us, but I hate politics more than, than, than the kids here, right? Um, we're going to move on. If I don't give those gentlemen that recognition, they do it for me very naturally through a spirit box. So mm. I always make sure I give them their recognition and then we just move on. Um, I'll explain more about that before we leave the space. Now, we're going to be discussing Eliza much better and we're still in Women's History Month, right? Yeah, we're still yeah, in March. March. Mm -hmm. Look at me. I'm going to be talking about women all night long, so you guys know. Um, and she's like, until when? I know, um, I'm, like, I'm ready. I'm timing you. <laughs> now, Eliza marries Charles at a young age according to today's standards. I say it slowly because if you're going to ask her how old she was when she got married, do not expect numbers from the colonial days that she came from when young ladies got married at the ages of 12 and 14. Mm. Think of today's standards because the husband was over double her age when they married. It was creepy then, it's creepy now. I'm just going to point that out. Sometimes I have to put my foot in my mouth because sometimes I have a couple in my group that's at that large age gap between them and they're like, hey, man. I'm like, oh, crap. There we go. That's, I kind of like, I wait to see if I actually have a couple in that age group. Um, but anyway, Eliza married him because her father was over in England. He thinks he's dying. He's trying to bring all of his children home one last time. So you can see him. Eliza and Eliza's son. Stay put right here. Got married. It's 1744, everybody. You don't get married in that year. You get a green card. We're not a country. It's not a thing. She did marry him out of love. This is a true love story, believe it or not. There's nothing horrific about this location. This is actually a happy place. <clears throat> so with that said, she was correct. Dad did not die right away. Instead, he starts sending her gifts from England to where you're standing. One of those gifts happened to be the plant seeds of indigo. That is a plant that makes blue dye that makes her blue jeans blue. Some of you are wearing it tonight because that's what we use it for now. When Eliza got her seeds, she didn't know what to do with them. She had to learn from her servants and slaves how to keep it cultivated. It's obviously not hot for you all the time. So when she did that, she learned how to make the dye, moved it to a cash crop, got a hold of dad, and told him that the rice plantations are going downhill. They were going to make a killing with their new indigo crops. She was correct. Because now we have an international businesswoman during colonial times. Something hmm. absolutely unheard of. Now, that's the boring business stuff of Eliza. I tried to fly through as quickly as I could based on the age group that we have here tonight. So let's kind of show you how this is actually going to work. Um, I'm going to give the communication device people a set of focus questions. So what does that mean? You can ask these things out loud. You can just focus on them. Um, you can also keep in mind that we have three cameras running plus my voice recorder. If you're asking a question, Amber, the answer might go to my voice recorder. It might actually come up on along those devices. It might go anywhere. That's why I love to use this many devices. Even if it was just two people showing up, we're still going to have two communication devices mm -hmm. among the three of us just to kind of verify what's actually happening. Um, so. Um, if you go rogue and do not use the questions that I give to you, by all means, the only thing I'm going to ask is that you're respectful while we're here and that they're not yes-no questions. Okay? There's always a way to reword the question, and yes, I will catch you. <laughs> I'm the bad English guy, right? Um, so we're actually going to start off with Amber's headset because hers is probably going to give us the most. The core thing that you're going to be focused on is going to be wrapped around Eliza's death. 
so she's pretty open about talking about it. The four things that we get, how old were you when you died? What did you die from? Where are you buried? Which president was a pallbearer at your funeral? Ooh. Ooh. So if that doesn't tell you how important this young lady was, I don't know what will. Right. Um, so the two of you are actually going to be kind of working together with your devices. Uh, again, it's kind of weird. I didn't set this up this way on purpose. I'm forcing you to work with your wife. I hope she's going to be okay with that. Um, so, um, so you're going to be looking for Eliza's initials, ELP, in that order. No anagram, no mix with scramble, that kind of thing. So I want them all next to each other. The reason why is because those are her full initials, but she's the second wife named Eliza from Charles, back to back. The oh, first wow. wife, also named Eliza, has a maiden name that starts with the letter L as well. Oh. I'm not going to tell you what either one of those are. You're going to hopefully find out through the box that you're using. We need oh. to find out which Eliza's here. So, so far we have three Chucks, two Elizas. Yeah. See how i got to keep all this stuff straight? Yikes. Now. Do you see a mansion that's standing over there in the front of this lot? No. no. Okay. You're going to ask what the hell happened to it. Okay. Um, in the events that you get the what, we often get two or three numbers from the exact date of when that tragedy occurred. I'm giving you a clue that it was a tragedy that happened oh, to the mansion. Oh, no. Um, the earthquake. <laughs> I'm not telling you any of that. Um, so, um, I think I pretty much got everybody down. I do have to keep Alonzo with me for just a minute so I can show him how to operate that thing. Um, mm -hmm. But you guys are going to spread out in the lot in the event that people are cutting through the lot and you have a camera, just point it in the opposite direction. We are the weirdos tonight. Just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> we have people that walk by us all night long and just say, what, what the hell are you guys doing? In the events that we walk by another ghost tour tonight, we, we're actually allowed to go up to 20 people in the oh. city of Charleston. They try to join I don't us. do it. Oh. I only go to 10 to 12 people. Um, so I set everything up for 10, and then I'm kind of like, eh, do I really want to go up to 11 or 12 tonight? Mm -hmm. I didn't tonight. I wanted to stick to the 9 once we actually got up to that point with Amherst Group. Mm -hmm. Talking about somebody from Colonial Times. <laughs> no. Horse and buggy. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're ghost. That's, that's true. Okay. And this is why you guys come to see me. I, just, I teach you to speak. Heard clearly. Interesting. Like, oh. Wow. But we also are near Big John's, who is from this century. What do we have? Did he have a car tumor. accident? Tumor. <gasps> tumor. Very interesting. Hmm. Wait. Are you Wait. Am I supposed to ask you? Accident and tumor? Oh, you said yeah. not yet. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> tumor. The tumor by itself is interesting. The car accident is like a, I don't know if that happened to Big John, because we are still uh, close enough in proximity. Again, they do intersect, even though they're from two different centuries. That's all right, um, so yeah, get yourself unmuted and let's spread out. And I'll kind of do one or two Ron Robbins with everybody to kind of see what's going on, and then I'll yank this back and give you all the answers. Yeah. Okay. She can turn this on now? I am muted. I am muted. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, what do I do? I ask you have to ask. Oh, what? what happened to the mansion, Eliza? Oh, the light turned off. <laughs> Girl, stop. Are you going to stand slowly? You want to walk more? <laughs> but I'm like, you gotta help listen, because I'm a bad listener. Can you walk closer? Oh, Can you tell me again what happened to the what happened to the mansion? I didn't hear. Do I move forward? You keep walking. I keep walking. Just hold it there. Huh? Hold it there. Can you turn the volume? 
One job in the Please tell me what happened to the mansion. Where'd it go? Yeah, you did. You touched the button you weren't supposed to touch. Working fine. Oh, okay. Is what it's supposed to do. And the supposed to just oh, hold it. sorry. I don't know. Sorry, Eliza. Can you please tell me again I won't lose the thing? What happened to the mansion? If I was Eliza, I would be irritated with me. <laughs> because I don't like repeating myself. <laughs> Fifteen things tonight. Can you take this with me? Of course. Two seconds, Eliza. Don't tell me anything important. Have you heard anything? Yet? I have not heard no. anything. What, is, what about you? Did you find anything on yours? 
like there's lights and like shadows. Oh, and, there's like, no. Two, what about yours? No. no. So no. I've got to 2.6. I'm supposed to get to 2.5. Okay. okay. And um, like literally just a second ago, I got to right here for like literally a millisecond. Ooh, oh, okay. So I got nothing. It looks like I bugs. Think, it looks like bugs in my camera. <laughs> I think I went in somewhere. Maybe. Okay. 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 So you I'll tell wait. me. Tell okay, me if we see cool. Eliza. Oh, it's the light. Oh yeah. Are you gonna look at me? Yeah. But I don't want to look at you. Why do you want to look at me? Oh, I was gonna be like in the moment. Oh. Okay. You just look confused. Okay, I'll look, smile for one. Sorry, Eliza. If you want to tell me I'm listening, can you please tell me what happened to your health? Oh, are you supposed to be looking away? Oh no, I'm sorry. Oh, actually, that's kind of okay. That's when you were talking to me. <laughs> Can I get a good picture? Of my voice box? Oh, yeah. yeah. I guess I could hold my jacket so I don't need to hold it on my waist. It's a nerd. Fine. I'll do candid one. I'm going to tell my... Oh, my photos are snapped out, so I love it. Yeah. I thought it was 2.6 here, and then, uh, that wasn't the same. Um, How's your Ouija board? Nothing yet. Nothing? How about you? Anything? Nothing. Catch anything? Nah, it just looks like bugs flying past mine. Those are the spirits. <laughs> no. No, I'm telling myself they're bugs. <laughs> Eliza's ignoring Amanda. Huh? I said Eliza's ignoring you. But I was saying, like, if I was Eliza and someone kept asking me, what happened to your mansion? So when he says you're going to get 15 terms, does that mean, like, clear? Yeah. It's clear like, throughout the whole night. No, I know. I heard that. But, like, there's... He like, gave me the lame job. Okay, guys. That, <laughs> that is the honest. He didn't trust me with anything. Well, I haven't gotten anything yet. Because you're supposed to be looking for E-L... E-L-P or words with three letters. Okay. Morning, so. okay. I'm pretty sure I came out here. My neck looks broken. Let's take another one. Oh. I don't know how I took that. I don't know if you took that. Go in the light. Okay. How are we doing over here? So I have a question about hers. Yes. You, I, you said she's gonna get 15 to 20 words. Is it gonna be like it's gonna be clear? We'll be able to hear it. Okay. Because like I hear like the. Yeah, you're gonna hear mumbling from the. Radio. Yeah, and I'm like, oh, was that something? Look at it this but way. It's gonna be... If you only heard mumbling, you weren't meant to hear it. Got it. Okay. When you hear something, it's it'll gonna be come clear through. and loud. Please, Eliza, tell me what happened to her. Got it. Okay. <laughs> So. And so the little things that I see like flying past, that's probably a bug? More than likely. Okay, that's what I thought. If it's coming from outside the frame and goes outside the frame, it's yeah. inside. Okay, that's like, what I thought. Because yeah. like I've seen a couple things fly across, but I'm like, it's probably a bug. orbs will appear in frame, uh, move intelligently okay. in different directions, and disappear in frame. Okay, so then yes, that was... So they have to probably have some at least bugs. one of those criteria of either appearing or disappearing in frame for me to be able to even look at it. Got it. And do I have to keep repeating the question? Or um, you like... can kind of, if you're kind of getting tired of that, uh, I mean, you can move on to one of the other questions that I can No, I'm fine. I just don't want it to, like, yeah. like, if I, like, if I keep saying it over and over and over and over again. Try. <laughs> Try asking what, um... How old were you when you died, Eliza? Yeah.
guys haven't heard anything come out of that thing at all? No, it's just, it's, I thought the words were supposed to be, like, I thought we had to listen to the static. So nothing's been, nothing's been clear enough that we could hear. No, I'm just, I wanted to make sure, like, we had both FM and AM, and they were both blinking. Kind of. Do I stop? Yeah, okay. cameras, go ahead and give your hands a break. There you go. Go. <laughs> there you go. All right, so we're going to cover the cover the quick answers. Yeah, go ahead and stop. Why do I struggle with this? Chill out for a few minutes. Um, so here's what I'm excited about. We actually had a few words on Amanda's device that showed up um, that are actually all relevant to where you're standing. We did get the word European. Obviously, I told you she's from England. Um, we got the word seed and berry. They were pretty far apart, uh, but that kind of goes together when obviously you're planting seeds. You got to bury them. Um, so the berry part is kind of a big stretch, but I do like the word seed for sure. Uh, the word tumor. That's going to make a lot of sense to you guys here in just a moment. Now, what was the other one that I said that was kind of cool? Uh, oh, I got that other tours are going to come in here because it is a good chance that they will uh, that they will come out of that ivory wall that's so freaking in the event for coming out of the ivory wall amber you just kind of lower your camera a little bit um and then christina you'll point yours directly at the ground you know just kind of okay it got it um so she's doing a great job already all right so um we obviously i have to write down i am our i am scott is that what you heard okay anything else that you may have heard that stood not, out to you not only that word Okay, not gonna put your paycheck on it. <laughs> Amanda, what'd you get out of yours? Globe. Oh, I was talking to the other Amanda. Oh, sorry. nothing. Nothing. She said she might have heard music. I thought it said music. Okay, Amanda number two, go for it. Globe. Anything else? No. No, but she did get Isaac. Uh -huh. All right, Alonzo, go ahead and give us a fresh reset on your device. That'd be the green dial. Um, EMF meters. Um, so Aiden, uh, you're not going to give me anything below an 8 at this location. Um, with the other two, so that would be really yours, is definitely back to the 2.5 because I'm still learning about it. And definitely tell me any colors you get out of there. Um, the reason for the 8 on uh, Aiden is because we are near uh, two lamp posts. Um, so it does give off a little bit of electricity. So I want to make sure like what we have is legitimate. Um, so 
Welcome to Philadelphia Alley. So I know that this is talking and can be very boring for the kids, so I will breeze through this as quickly as I can so we can go get back to work at the next location. Pass it down. <laughs> like there's, there's little seats all over the place. Just your size. Um, so this is Philadelphia Alley, but it used to be called Duelers Alley. So this is where some of the oh. duels used to occur for the city of Carlston. Um, exactly. Um, so Alonzo, you're going to be specifically looking for the letters R-I in that particular order. Uh, that's the major initials and of course anything being spelled out for us. I heard graveyard. Uh, <gasps> so here's how this story goes. Every ghost tour comes down here. Literally every ghost tour comes Watch here. Watch it. I actually hate this story. So with that said, there's a, I was actually going to take this out of my route. Um, I do change this up every year. I was I add one space and I take one out. I tried to take the Pinkney Mansion site out because I was getting very rude ghost hunters, like on your end, and like, come on, Eliza, and then they're going to take a leak in the corner. And I was getting very nasty messages coming through. Um, however, that's why I always tell, like, I, that's the space that I go through every night, and I tell Eliza all of your names. It's kind of a pact that I have with her, so keep allowing me to come there. Um, so that way I don't get nasty messages. Disembodied voices do come out of that location. Um, so it's kind of a weak stretch, but I get where you She got 2.6. Two, oh. Five, five. Ooh, two no, point six. Look, anything your highest. No, yeah. Two it's point. a strong 2.6. Is it right staying now. at 2.6? Yeah, right now it's staying at 2.5. Okay, then that's a man-made object. It's probably coming from the lamp post because we do oh. have electrical lines in here. So if it stays there... Oh, well, it, it's moving. It's fluctuating. Up the road. But yeah, between like 2.3 to 2.7. He, he said that this went up the road. If it went to like a, a, a 2.6 to a 10 and then back down to 1, I would probably count that as maybe an anomaly happening. But if hovering in the same number is usually coming from a man-made oh, yeah, object. It's staying at 2.5. Yeah, now. that's definitely coming from the lamp post around us. All right, so with this location is a big old cliche. Let's get into it. Some of the duels used to occur Starting down here. So when I say, you know, some of the duels is because dueling was illegal uh, during the 1700s and they had to find hiding spots. This just happened to be one of them. <laughs> so here's how the story goes. A doctor moves down here from Rhode Island. There's your first R.I. Alonzo. So that's part of the reason why you're looking for R.I. is that Rhode Island of where he mm -hmm. came from. Um, so he moves down here. His name is Dr. Joseph Brown Ladd. In the event that Davion hears the song Brown Eyed Girl while we're here, it is not coincidence. We get it all the time because it's part of the doctor's name. Um, we've even gotten the word Brown that shows up on the word list that Amanda's using. Um, so back to Doc. He moves here because he's supposed to get married to his fiance Amanda. That's a great I know. That would be our third Amanda of the night. Three Amandas now! So, Amanda just inherited a bunch of money from her dead parents. So, she has an attorney helping her out with all of this cash flow. Now, the attorney thinks that Dr. Ladd is just after Amanda's money, so he tells Amanda to get rid of the doctor. So, Doc moves down here to Charleston to prove that he's not. And on his way into town, the coachman he had set him up to be robbed and killed. So it's kind of like having a really bad Uber driver in today's terms, if you really think about it. Um, so somebody was walking by and seeing what was about to happen because he knew the driver. The person walking by, his name was Ralph Isaacs. There's your second R.I. Um, we were getting the letters R.I. all the time on the Red Spirit box, so I bought the device that Alonzo is using specifically for this location. I've had it for about a year, and we've had the R.I. show up about half a dozen times, and it's always been whenever I say Ralph's name. Um, so now we know where it's referenced to. Back to Ralph. He tells the doc, dude, I know this guy, the coachman. He's going to try to kill you. Come with me. I got friends at 59 Church Street. You can rent a room and you'll be safe and good to go. Doc took him up on the offer and the two gentlemen became friends. Now, the longer the doctor stays here in Charleston, the more money he's making. He's proving his point. He's not after Amanda's money. He's making his own. Uh, she gets wind of this and she's moving down so they can be married. And Dr. Ladd then became known as the Whistling Doctor. This is why I hate the story. Whistling ghosts are a big old cliche. Every haunted city you're ever going to visit in the future is going to have a whistling ghost, I promise. Oh. Ours just happens to be a doctor. Moving forward of why this, we're in Dueler's Alley with these two gentlemen. So, Dr. Ladd and Ralph go see plays together. They can't sit next to each other because the doctor makes more money. That's the hierarchy of Charleston. So, on their way home from seeing Richard III, they're arguing over the new actress that they just saw. Dr. Ladd thought she was great. Ralph didn't think so. They start arguing, and then Ralph starts insulting the doctor's fiance, Amanda, back home in Rhode Island. So it got really ugly, and they go their separate ways. So I told you Ralph has friends around town. He goes to his friends at the newspaper, and he puts an ad in the paper telling the whole city of Charleston what he thinks of the doctor. Kind of a, you're a disgrace to society kind of stuff. Doc saw the ad, but rebuttaled with, let's go to Dueler's Alley. We're going to settle this once and for all. Oh. He can't fit down here. Oh, Normally well. there's a big old pole, like right in the center. He's probably just trying to turn around. I got a 46.3. 46.3? You sure you don't have a cell phone on you? 
Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Doesn't even have a watch right now. So, again, Doc says, let's go to Dueler's Alley. Somebody's going to die. Keep in mind that this argument that they're having started over an actress. Kind of dumb and stupid, right? So, yeah. they came down here, back to back. They took their 10.8. And then, gun in the air. 2.8. Shoots his gun. He only has one bullet. He shoots it in the air. He didn't want to kill his friend. He wanted to have his courage and bravery to kill him. Oh, he shot the core. What's up? He just kind of rumbled it on the ground, but it shows energy. She shakes it, she'll get a high number too. So, because it's creating energy. Um, yeah. But Ralph, he still has his one bullet during his duel. He hasn't shot it out yet. Puts it into the kneecap on the doctor. The doctor gets shot. He fell to the ground. Friends picked him up, took him home to 59 Church Street, where he died 10 years yeah. later, on November 2nd of 1786, after receiving medical story. So, I'm going to point out two things. First off, 1786, when this whole thing went down. Gunshot wounds back then, a lot different than what they are now. And secondly, he was a doctor, guys. He tried to, probably just had lead poisoning. He tried to bleed it out himself. He just failed. He was shot. And every day, so much time to listen for the whistle while you're here. You guys see how quiet it is? Yeah. It is like this on a busy Saturday afternoon. And it's always it's quiet down here, unless, of course, there's a number of tours here, which is a common thing. It's just not aware that we don't have anybody else down here with us. Everybody tells you to listen for the whistle. We have three cameras running, plus my voice support. We're going to pass their whistle. It'll be on one of those four devices. Secondly, the Red Square Box is Avion's using. I can't tell you how many times we've actually had the whistling part of the song and the word doctor from a commercial show up immediately after. I'm also withholding information about the doctor from all of you. So in the event that you guys pass the things over there at the next location, you're not going to know why it's relevant until I post it. But that's a good point. I'd like to withhold information so you guys have a genuine experience. Now, if you're going to try this on your own without me and walk all the way through the alley and use voice recorders from your phone trying to capture the whistle, just keep in mind that every local knows this story. Anybody sure walking up and down here. Cumberland Street or Queen Street is going to throw a whistle oh, down yeah. the alley. Mm -hmm. so you did hear the word story, but I tell stories all night long, so I kind of threw it out the window. That's kind of like a TV. Mm -hmm. um, but everybody throws a whistle down here, including me. So it's kind of just um, And you guys are doing this on your own, especially since I got thrown out of here talk about that because that's exactly why we go to the next location. So oh. it's like I just caught your attention. Um, <laughs> a little bit. That's how this one goes. So in a nutshell, the, the alley didn't go all the way through the way we came in. There was a wall up there. The reason why, because this is where they kept the, the livestock for the city of Charleston. It used to be cut out of the before it was Dueler's Alley. What does that mean for you guys? That means that the bricks down at the other side, down by Queen Street, are older than the ones you're standing on. Those are sun-dried bricks from slave children. There's a full yeah. handprint from a slave child down there in one of those bricks. Handprint, right in the brick. Fingerprints wiped enough. I used to take my groups all the way through just for a history lesson. There's nothing paranormal about it. We all need to see how far away we've come away from all of you know the slavery. So I took my group down there on November 26, 2020, and I told them we're just going to walk by it. They all huddled around that damn brick waiting for something to happen. I also treat that brick the same way I do a grave. The kid's not there, guys. It's the last place you're going to find it. So, got to them along, because we're also standing outside the dining room window of the beautiful mansion at the end of the alley. I'm just trying to be respectful. I didn't realize that I was out of bounds. So the new owner of that mansion came out screaming. My daughter thought it was great because she was on the tour that night. Her dad's getting yelled at. <laughs> um, so we moved on. The next day was Thanksgiving. I was full on Thanksgiving simply because I worked in upper management for Walmart, and you guys like to like, fight over cows on Thanksgiving. Yeah, I'm the, I'm the guy who had to break up those fights. So I don't think that's struggling for life. I don't on Thanksgiving. The next day was the 28th. I got a hold of my partner, and I told him what happened. And he was like, dude, you're not allowed to go down that far. It's residential. You're only allowed to go down halfway. Mm. Somebody already filed a complaint. And they were right. So, I was like, you gotta reroute your group. Here's what happened. I told my group that night, because I'm sold out again for Black Friday, the day after Thanksgiving, and I told them, I don't believe in the next story. I've never had anything happen up there, especially with my equipment, and I'm not in the pirate, I'm in the vampire. Obviously, we're discussing pirates next, in case you guys didn't pick up on that. <laughs> so, we, uh, before we left the space, somebody with a spirit box heard the name Anne. I didn't tell them which pirate we're gonna be investigating, the female pirate, Anne Bonnie. So I was kinda like, okay, maybe we're gonna get something. He just recognized that name from Black Sail. I guarantee it. Or Black Flag, right? Assassin's Creed? I don't know. No? Yeah, I'm just terrible. Oh. Well, probably from Assassin's Creed. Sorry. I keep seeing uh. the same thing. <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, so we go up and around the corner, and I told him what I did know about piracy, which wasn't very much, by the way, because I only had a few hours of research, and it's not a topic I was really that into. Somebody else heard the number 300 coming out of their spirit box. I didn't know what that meant. 
I wrote it down, I do the research for them, and it turns out we were there on November 28th of 2020, and Bonnie's trial for piracy was November 28th of 17. Wow. We were there on the exact 300th anniversary of her pirate trial. Oh, wow. Now, I normally get the oh wows. I was actually quite pissed off. Let me explain. <laughs> I have a master's degree in creative writing. When I'm writing anything, and especially doing ghost hunting and research for her, any facts and data. The problem with pirate stories is that they come from pirate lore, which was written a hundred years after the Golden Age of Pirates, the days of life. So, I've read more books on pirates than I've ever wanted to in my entire life. I've watched more documentaries, played more video games than I've ever wanted to on pirates, just to get a different version of the story. Um, just know that everything we're about to discuss at the next location came from a minimum of two resources of every sentence that will fall out of my head. Um, so, we'll see what happens. It's a 50-50 roll of the dice if we'll be there. We will be able to spread out like what we did at the Pinkney Mansion site, and it is a little bit more of a free-for-all like where you guys can ask your own questions. Um, so, with that particular location in the Pinkney Mansion, you can see why I kind of try to keep it controlled, especially around the Children Act. Um, things and things of, of that nature. Um, so before we leave the space, because I can already see like some some of the kids are going to sleep with all of the talking, um, the gate behind me. I also like to point this out because um, we're kind of a, a, a point of reference. There was I told you about the wall this way, right? Yeah. So um, in the event that there was a loser to the duel down here, this gate behind me was the shortcut to get to the cemetery on the other side of the wall. Otherwise, they're taking the dead body all the way down to Queen Street. Oh, yeah. You guys are all looking for Remy. He lives here. We're in his house. Nobody knows who Remy is. Oh. Thank you. The rat, actually. The rat, sorry. So, yes. We can do. It was what it was. Kind of. Small critter for life. Scott. Who's looking for Remy? Um, but, again, I like to point out the gate just because it is kind of a creep factor of, like, why it's actually here. The wrought iron was probably put there in the early 1900s, but you can definitely see that the archway is part of the original wall. That's why it was put here for that purpose. So that way they can go celebrate the winter quicker by just dropping the body in the hole that they already pre dug. You guys ready to learn about some rated R pirates now? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. I got a 44 20. Where are these 40s coming from? Can I see your device? Like, we're not going to get 40s down here. That's crazy. These 40s down here are not a thing. Like, the highest ever. I've been coming here for four years. It may be been like an 18. Like really yeah, I was trying to make a dinner reservation for 30 now. Oh, really? yeah. I get it. <laughs> like, that's the third time you've given me 40s in location yeah, that doesn't normally like, get 40. Like, beat, no? um, I don't want to be down here. I'm going to have to 44 at one location, mm -hmm. right? Like two locations ago. And then over here. And then a 48. And what was the other one? He can make it tomorrow. No, right? over here. Yeah. Oh. Um, get I don't a 40. Need to come on. <laughs> Never seen numbers that high over two guys. Was a Walter a part of the name? No, but that could also be a last name. Okay. Um, speaking of which, just let me know if you get the word Sam. Okay. That would be very interesting. That's a personal touch for me. Okay. I actually want to write That you know of. <laughs> Am I stopping? No. I'm gonna turn my on. What's that? Man? Dude, I'm like struggling. Oh, God. <laughs> 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 Not that way. Am I still looking for RI? I'll use no. Oh, maybe. But uh, you're gonna be looking for Andrew. Um, and then, of course, any other words that are being spelled out for us. We have had uh, plenty of pirate terms spelled out for us. We've had rum. Um, rum. Rum. Uh, rum. Ship that was no, it's okay. Um, I'm committed. I'm going to hear one thing. <laughs> Just be patient. Yes. If you have I will have patience. patience. <laughs> um, I don't know if you guys heard uh, that group that was on the corner. Was, like, rude as hell to you guys. They you were. They said that. They said That's why I don't do family friendly tours. Uh huh. Yeah. So let me let me tell you why. Like, and don't get me wrong. I know my tickets say eight to twelve. The reason why it's at eight to twelve is because people were trying to like bring four and five people and. I know they're having fun, Wait, but you want to like room. think that they're like oh, that's talking that's and things like that amongst you? Bring four or five year olds. For this. That's why my tickets went up to eight to twelve. Mm -hmm. I know that the kids are watching YouTubers. I know that right they're watching hand. the TV shows, and I know that some of this history can be long for them. But at the same token, they have gadgets in their hands of which they're mm -hmm. watching the TV. Mm -hmm. um, so that's part of the reason why I'm like my wife says, "How do you want to do this with the kids?" Um, want to like mm -hmm. four or five year olds? Like it, like it doesn't matter what I say. Like I'm literally just walking. Around. So that's kind of like how that. That young lady over there, 
Like that was completely. I heard her say that. I was yeah. like, what? Uh, what? what? what was she going to? We were walking by, and, and one of the kids was like pretty close what, to me, and she was go? about to drop the F bomb or something along those lines, and she's like, that's exactly oh, right. Family uh, exactly. oh, friendly towards you guys. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, I get it. But I'm also. Oh! Remember? Oh, that's picking up all of the lines of the garage. Oh, that was the tree. That was the tree. All the garage. 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 All the Right. Um, so, just so you guys know, the next location that we go to is our last stop, but we're going to take it up a notch, and we're going to be doing the Estes test. Does anybody know what that is? That's what he's on Oh, that's, that's good, because he's the only one with a headphone spirit box. Sounds so scary. One However, there are two other participants that are going to be involved with us. One from each group. Hang on one second. <laughs> so here's how this is going to go. Um, so, um, and, and of course, parents and whatnot, you guys can discuss this as we kind of move through this location. But the Estes method, if you're not familiar with it, um, in a nutshell, he is going to be blindfolded and have his headphones on. And he's not going to hear me or know the history of the location. Oh, no. Now, the second person is going to be under a VR helmet. VR is going to create images that is going to be complementary to the conversation that is going to be happening between me and Davia. So that's person number two. I'm trying something new tonight with a brand new device that I don't always get to use uh, just because the location of where we use it can be very noisy and I usually wait for super quiet. However, I thought I would try it along with this experiment. That person, third person, will be wearing a set of headphones from my very crazy voice recorder that can hear a frog fart from three miles away. Oh. They will be looking for disembodied voices that will be coming through. So we will have three people seated on a bench, one from every party. And basically what will happen is I will take the other six of you and I will teach you the history of that location so when we come back you get to watch it unfold mm. and that's the creepy factor of it that because the three people on the bench have no idea what they're looking for what they're listening for or listening for um, so kind of keep that in mind i've never done this with the new voice recorder so i thought it would be a good additive because the, the again that one location it's been getting very raucous down here with all of the spring breakers coming in so yeah, i haven't been able breakers. to go to that new location for this year because it needs to be completely quiet can't do that at the location, so we're going to do it in the park that we're going to do. Um, so we're going to see how this actually goes. Um, so what I'm thinking, and this is how this is going to go, is I'm thinking Davion's going to be blindfolded. Um, so I'm thinking either Ava is going to be watching the... I don't want to do this. No, I'm going to give her the headset so she can listen in, and it's going to be intense. Like, it is very... Like she's gonna hear every little rustle on the ground. If my shoe is scraping the ground and we can't hear it right now, she's gonna hear it. Oh. Mm. Yeah. Um, and then I think between the two of you, you guys can fight over who's gonna go on and not. Like, I'm, it's not a fight. Right. She can have it. I'll <laughs> <laughs> kind of kind of hear the story from you. Device. But I don't. Maybe I'm not the good person then. I want you to be underneath that VR, and you're okay. gonna be describing what you see out of it. So okay. I think this is actually gonna work out really Calm. well. Mom and Dad, you guys okay? Welcome. Going underneath that voice I think he may have better memory of what he hears. Well, we're also going to be recording the entire oh, thing. Oh, true. I don't know. So, do again. Do you really want to do it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. That's fine, right. too. You're fine. We'll okay. <laughs> it's fine. Aww. It's fine. All right. So, let's talk about why we're here. I just wanted to kind of give everybody the heads up of, like, what was coming, because it's a lot different than what we've been doing. The little tiny building over there. So, some of you asked me when we entered the space, what does a church parking lot have to do with pirates? We're not, I mean, we are in a church parking lot, but we're really here for that building right there. Um, by the way, those are not crosses on the building. Those are earthquake bolts. That is a oh. gunpowder magazine. Oh, wow. Earthquake bolts. What are those? Those are turnbuckles. They go all the way through the building and look just like that on the other side. If we have another earthquake, you can tighten them, and it tightens the building so it doesn't incur any further damage. Oh. It's a great idea. It just doesn't work. <laughs> um, the only reason I bring them up is because it's actually part of the reason why we're here. By the way, there is so much information here. I'm going to go That's super fine. quick with this one because some of the kids get very bored with the longevity of this. So I'll breathe through it and slow down on some of the twists for the, for the uh, people that will understand the twists. Um, but anyway, back to the earthquake bolts. Um, those are the first set of earthquake bolts that Charles 
Charleston ever put in. The reason why is because that's the oldest government building in South Carolina. Um, so they needed something to be able to protect it. It was finished in 1713. We are here because that building was being constructed at the same time that Anne Bonnie was coming here to start her new life. It's what I call a familiar. Now, for those of you that watch the TV shows, you've seen the Boo Buddy. That's the teddy bear with the little blinky light device in there, oh, okay. right? Mm -hmm. So they use that to try to attract the child ghost because yeah. the child would recognize it as a toy. Think of that concept with the building. We don't have any buildings this old. Hopefully she's going to be here at the same time we are. Hopefully we also get bleed over from Dr. Ladd in the event that Anne is not here. You can <laughs> see why it kind of twofold this location. So the building was finished in 1713, but took 10 years to build. Does that sound like our government? Small building? 10 years? <laughs> not at all. But our history begins right in the middle of it. 1708, young lady moves here from Ireland. Her name is Anne Cormac. She comes here with her father, his mistress. The mistress is Anne's mother. Is everybody with me so far? Yeah. So the three of them are running away from her father's angry wife. <laughs> and that was that, that wife that she kicked them out of the country. Um, so they land in Georgetown. That's between us and Myrtle Beach. Dad bought a plantation up there, but mom died pretty quickly. That means dad is now sending young Anne down here to sell things from the plantation to help keep things afloat. Hence the familiar building. <laughs> now, Anne back home in Ireland when she was a little girl, seven, eight, nine years old, they say she killed a servant with a knife to the belly. Ooh. So just giving you the mentality of this young lady as we kind of move forward and through her history. Now, Fast forward, the building's done in 13, but by 1715, pirates are starting to come through Charlestown. Anne is stoked. The reason why is she's going to fall in love with one of these guys so she can earn her freedom, just like a man. So, the first guy she fell in love with is James Bonnie. You already know where this one's going because I've already told you her pirate name. Dad didn't mm. prove he's a filthy pirate. They ran away to Jamaica. They got married. Now, when they get down there and they're married, Anne realizes that her new husband is not the Captain Jack Sparrow that she was hoping for. <laughs> this guy turns out to be a privateer. He's a spy for the British. He's a coward. This isn't who she wants. I'm sure she, British. she falls in love again. Guy number two. This is John Rackham, but everybody calls him Calico Jack. This is the guy that they based your Johnny Depp character off of, in case you were wondering. Oh. He has his own ship, he has his own crew, and wants to be part of that crew. You can't put a female on a pirate ship because it's bad luck. I'm trying to keep a family friendly for the kids involved. I usually throw that question back to you guys, and I get some really nasty answers. Um, but anyway, he makes a deal with her. If you dress like a guy and look like the crew, you could be part of the crew. She's okay with this because Dad used to cross-dress her as a boy apprentice back home in Ireland to hide her from his wife. She gets it. It's a man's world. Yeah. For the adults in the room, put two and two together. She's a female in his quarters. She's eventually going to get pregnant. You mm. cannot have a pregnant pirate dude on brawl <laughs> and get rid of Jack as captain. They'll vote him off. So he drops her off in Cuba. Have the baby over here. Come back later. Figure it out. She goes and has that baby, but returns without a baby. We have no idea what happened to the child, by the way. But she also comes back dressed as a female. This makes Jack pretty angry. Now everybody's going to know he let a girl on the ship. To make him even more mad, she's going to go flirting with the pirate crew he just captured. They're down below deck. Guy number three, in case you guys were losing track. Guy number three turns out to be a female, dressed like a guy, to be part of the crew the Calico Jack just captured. So now we have two females dressed like males on the same ship. It's gotta be pirates. Her name is Mary Reed. She went by Mark Reed to become a pirate. Now, Anna and Mary became friends for sure, maybe lovers, we're not really sure because of the time frame. But the British find out where they are. They send a whole fleet of ships to come take down one pirate ship. The rumor is, Anna and Mary were the only two pirates not drunk enough to come up and fight with one bullet flintlock guns. They don't know how to use cannons yet. That's because they haven't been pirates for very long. So, two ladies with one bullet guns can obviously not take on a whole fleet of Navy ships. They get arrested. And as they're being arrested, Anne looks at her captain and beau, Calico Jack, and she says, I'm so sorry to see you here, Jack, but if you would have fought like a man, you wouldn't be hanged like a dog. The word dog shows up a lot on all of the communication devices that we're using tonight. <laughs> the judge wants to see the two men, quote unquote, that fought back so valiantly on their own. Calico Jack and the drunken pirates, they're already dead and gone. He's already tried and hung them. Um, so Anne and Mary go in front of this judge and reveal their gender, hoping to save themselves. The judge doesn't care that they're female. Wow. They're still pirates. He's going to hang them anyway. They scream out, we plead our bellies, which means they're claiming to be pregnant. You can't hang a pregnant woman in 1720. It's illegal. He sends them both back to jail and delays the hanging. Dad is still up here in South Carolina with all of his Irish money. He bails out Anne and brings her home. She remarries. That's husband number two, but guy number four. We're going to count Mary because we don't really know. Yeah, I know, right? She has four kids and dies at the age of 84. Oh, wow. Oh. Very abrupt ending because we don't know jack squat about her after her power career. That is actually fact. <laughs> um, everything is speculative fiction for that matter. Mary Reed died five months later in that Jamaican jail from whatever pirates died from in a Jamaican jail. Use your imagination. Um, most people, most books will tell you that it was a deep fever. I say make it romantic, call it scurvy. Why the hell not? We're talking pirates. Oh. Now, I'm not going to control this environment. Like I said, you can ask whatever you want to. I'm just going to tell you a few things that I left out on purpose just so you have something to work with. Um, I do not expect, by the way, the EMF. If you get any EMF in here, the 2.5 is exciting. 
um, just so you know. And the closer you go to those bushes, you're going to get things from the parking meters and the two electrical poles on the corner. Um, so 2.5 back here is where I normally get pretty excited. Now, um, as far as questions, I did not tell you the name of Anne Bonnie's parents. That's the father and the mistress. So kind of look for those. The name of the city where Anne grew up in Ireland. You can ask about that. The name of Calico Jack's ship and the color of Anne Bonnie's hair. All other questions are fair game. I usually say if you smoke tobacco and drink rum, have at it. You'll probably attract her even more like to get her over here. Um, so kind of keep that in mind too. This is not the prominent English woman where I'm like, please be as respectful as possible. <laughs> this is a kick-ass female pirate. Kick her in the shins and get your answers. Mm -hmm. Like that's kind of how I look at this place. Um, so any other tours come through here, just point your cameras in the other direction, but we are going to spread out through the whole location. Let's do okay. it. Okay. Okay. Goodbye. Hey. What color is your hair, Anne? Anything 2.5 or higher? I saw a 2, but I didn't see the other two. You want to switch? I'm just gonna let it come to me. Please, Anne, just tell me something. Anything. Haha. <laughs> 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 Amanda's mad because it goes what doctor. orb I've ever caught in my 14 years of ghost hunting yeah? has been here. Really? Yeah. It was bigger than my head. Oh my gosh. It appeared in frame, came towards me, stopped, mm. turned, and then went up and disappeared in frame. What? It was like a, I don't know, we'll just say four to six seconds. Wow. Like it was there a long time. It was giant. We didn't even know what was going on in real time. I, I caught it the next day. When you, when you rewatch it? <sighs> See why I don't always fall out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Time. It's so small. Oh, no, that's fine. Well, it's really... 
got nothing on that. Um, but just keep going. Like try to keep a little tally because I'm going to be bouncing around with everybody. Did you get another four, Aiden? No. No. I don't know. I don't know. I think there's no definition. But it cuts out so fast. Like I heard some music. But then it cut out. That's green? Uh, oh, green. Oh, that's crazy? No. That's green? That was clear. What is it? What is it? That's green? That's clean? That's clean? Clean? Green? Maybe? Huh? Please go. Ghost, come to me. I won't move. I move too much. Hold it like this. I heard one green, clear thing. Clean. It was green, like a. Clean. What's your first instinct? Green. Okay. Always <laughs> said go with that. your first instinct. That's oh yeah, that's green, or that's clean. <laughs> Where's Amber? She was asking questions too. I want to know what she was asking to see if that's relevant. It I don't think she it. asked a question. I was asking all the questions. Oh. I said, just tell me anything. What's your parents' name? <laughs> yeah. Well, the funny thing, like I was just telling Dave Young, because he's still relatively new to listening to that, was like, just, dude, tell me everything you hear. Mm -hmm. Again, everybody's asking questions. Yeah. We yeah. don't know where they stick. You know, and he's trying to come up to me with every single thing he oh. hears. And I'm like, dude, slow down. <laughs> go, go create a list. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to follow up with everybody else. Um, but you finally heard some type of voice coming through. It was yeah. very clear. It was very clear. Ish. <laughs> Green, clean. Well, compared to the other ones where I'm like, compared I think to, I heard, like, I heard it, it was, it was there, someone, was it was there. the man's voice that said, that's, 
I heard that's clean. That's clean, that's green. But of course, I'm talking about an Irish woman. Oh. Uh, green is probably going to be the first. There you go. Preconditioned box. Green Ireland. There Kelly you go. Green. Kelly Green. Am I supposed to say Phil? Is that making you mad if I walk around? I actually prefer that you guys move around a little bit. Gets different like reception to the radio. Yeah. Did you get any words? Nothing that's like standing out. Well. So Fear funny. them. Oh my god. I know, but he was like, meh. I was like, okay. <laughs> like, meh. Fear them. Fear them. You got 2.5? Did you get any cool words? No. Mm. I got lube down the alley. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, I thought they got lube down there. What? Lube? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can't find any trouble. Except, bro. Hey, Except just the people. Not do the trees. You gotta do I'm this not, time. I'm trying to look around. You sound sad. Of your hair. Oh, I forgot this one more. Yeah. Her parents' name? Her parents' name? Well, where are you from? I don't know. When she came over to me, she said that you got Distance in between the pacing, but that's 50 feet. That's not a 
Yeah, yeah, I'll give it to you back. Anything else not to come out of you? No. Does she hear anything else that you know of? Uh, I don't know. She's trying to get them to come to her. not showing anything. You want to switch? What do I do with this? You're looking for orbs, the little white balls that come towards you. Oh, okay. That's, that's a light. That's the yeah. moon. Ooh. Red. Right there, I see something. Um, I see something. Right there, a light orb. Mm, I think that's just a reflection or something oh. over there. I don't think that's an orb. Yeah, Bob. Is that thing, Bob? Yeah, that's a light. Never mind. I thought I saw something. Yeah. 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 So I'm saying, oh, what do you think? Mama, that's when Lady switched with me. I know, it's like you and she Oh, switched. yeah. Um, Briella's got some um, camera that mm. shows like orbs or. Yeah. yeah. It's like a. Yeah. Um, yeah, and she has my first ones. Oh, wait. I think it's. Just do that. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, sorry you've had a hectic day. I hope it gets better. Mm -hmm. you, know, you can probably rest, but I guess it's delightful. My nurse reader lit all the way up. Like, And then I said, can you tell me, did you, did somebody do, like, what I said? I don't want to know what she's talking about, but I can't pause the video or edit it, so, um, this is going to be a really weird video. But I just want to make things, I'm just going to make them, I don't know how I get that in the Here's it, right over there. I tell him, okay, so I tell him that it keeps going crazy over there, and that's it. Oh, yeah. Um, 
My mom said that her thing keeps going to like the yellow and the orange over there. But I don't know. She has some weird things up. Okay. All right, guys. Let's rein this one in. Let's kind of see what we got going on here. Oh, thank you. She said she doesn't get much, but. Like a job, like a lawyer? Maybe, like, maybe, are those graves? Uh huh. Oh my god. <laughs> well, I said that they're in the graveyard. Well, hmm. That's super weird. Maybe they're on the computer and they click that? Because that's pretty. When you're under, you're going to literally be telling me everything you hear, okay? So you don't know what questions I'm asking, so hopefully, even yes-no answers, tell me if it's a yes-no answer, because I might ask for a ghost if I'm wearing a black vest. Okay. So you're going to tell me yes or no. That's the hope. Now you're going to keep both headphones on. I don't want you to hear me. You will keep it loud enough where you can't hear me. Um, so don't go just blindfolded just yet. Also, when you get your blindfold on and headphones on, turn your volume up and then leave it alone. I want to make sure you're not cheating. A lot of people try to cheat. Uh, believe it or not, they want to try to listen to me to try to make it look real. Oh. Right? That's the kind of mentality behind it. Let me see your device. Um, I feel like something touched me. <laughs> um, so, oh. this particular device, you're going to wear these headphones and you're basically going to sit there. I know it sounds weird, but when you put these headphones on, it's going to be crazy in there. If you hear another voice that is not me or him, or her, you tell me if you heard a different voice, okay? Now, this is also going to record the entire thing for you guys. You will get this full recording back. You are good to go to put those on, and all you're going to do is hold this nice and true. And you should be able to hear me nice, loud, and clear. Isn't that pretty crazy in there, right? With yours, let me see your phone that's inside there. You're going to be seeing images. Hopefully, it's going to be complimentary to whatever Davion's telling me. Okay. okay, you're going to very briefly describe what you see. Three people bent tree. If he's not saying much, I may ask you for probing questions like what's the time period? What are the people wearing? Got it. Um, that kind of mentality. Um, and you'll be able to hear this whole conversation. You just have no idea why I'm asking him the questions that I'm asking. Got it. Um, this is also not a 3D world. It's not going to be like you're going to be inside of this immersive whatever. Mm -hmm. It is a virtual reality, but the imagery is going to be in 2D, like okay. off in the distance. It's going to just look up photograph floating, floating in space. Um, you're gonna see a bunch of stars in the background that's just there so you don't fall asleep. Okay. Okay, so that's why I put those in there. Uh, sorry, my hands off. I would take them off. Oh. Probably not gonna fit. Um, so, with yours, Davion, it is 1127. Go ahead and put your blindfold on and then headphones over your ears and crank it up. Put the headphones on first so you know how loud it is, dude. <laughs> I heard help. Dude, you're not <laughs> blindfold. <laughs> wow, he's gonna pop an eardrum in there. Turn it down, dude. Okay, turn it down. Okay. Oh, 
Turn it down a little bit so you don't blind or like blast yourself in the ear. Okay. All you're gonna have to do is look straight ahead. Okay. It'll line up with you. Try to look straight ahead and not down because it'll start hitting like virtual reality buttons and we don't want to do that. Okay. 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 Now Aiden, that seems like an odd job to have, but you're doing something brand new that I've never done before in this location, so hopefully you're gonna hear a voice that's not mine. Alright, so Davion, what color is the blue banana? Perfect, he can't hear me. Um, so, hopefully he remembers that he's supposed to speak. <laughs> a lot of people get underneath that thing and they forget to talk. Yeah, I can hear from my hand. Yeah, but is he gonna remember to tell me everything he hears? Okay, Henry, if you're here, this is Davion. He can hear whatever you want us to hear. We also have Aiden trying a new box for us tonight. Your voice can be heard through the little box that he is holding. And then, of course, you know the green box. So this is Amanda. She can see whatever you want us to see. So, Henry, let's start off with something about your occupation. 11, 28 p.m. <gasps> I'm sorry. I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> so, an accident. Henry, let's start off with your occupation. What did you do for a living? How did you earn your money? Let's start off nice and slow. Do me a favor, lift up one of his earmuffs and tell him to tell us what he's hearing. Tell us what you're hearing. What? Tell us what you're hearing. Okay. Henry, can you tell us what sound we just heard out of the church? <laughs> Henry, what sound did we just hear out of the church? Listening. We were listening. Can you tell us what sound it was? In the box. Are you talking Strong. about what the new box that Aiden is holding? Are you wondering what that is? It's basically like a uh, voice amplifier. We can hear you. You won't have to use just the box that you normally use. You can go to the other one here in the middle and we can hear your voice. You have welcome, start, Sophia. Sophia name pops up on there a lot, like it's some kind of spooky name. Oh, um, wait, wait, Henry? Henry, let's get back to what you did as your oh. occupation. And Andrew? Any images at all? No. Do you have Andrew? Okay. Is somebody else here? with Henry Timrod tonight? Family. <gasps> Which part of his family is here? Hell. Forgive. I said... Henry. Who else is here with you? You have the name Andrew. I heard hell. I got him. So. Good. Good. Who's good? I need names. Verify. You tell us who's here with you. Calculation. Amanda, you got nothing? No, I just see like a white. A white. Go ahead and take that off for a second. Let me Forgive. Forgive. Answer questions. We're trying to get Sorry, you to answer questions. And we've had nights where we, this hasn't given us anything, but I don't want tonight to be one Everyone. Of you. There's just like a white yeah. skeleton thing? Yep. Okay. Narrow. Henry, I want to know more about this Andrew person. Can you get in there? Sometimes. Okay. You're going to have four buttons along the bottom. Hit the left button. So fear. Strength. Okay. Henry, we need more things that are more specific to that. So you should have a check mark. Health mm -hmm. Just hold the center on there. Henry? 
Back to your occupation. What did you do for a living? Ford 413. you were being paid for your poetry? That's a yes, no question. Activity. Free falling. Ever. <laughs> Henry. Under control. Let's, let's go a little bit further into your work. Can you tell us what you used to write about? What did you write about? Amanda hasn't had any images yet. Use the green box too. Populated. Useful. Henry, it's been about six minutes already. Noah. You know we Shadow. Do, you know we only do this for four minutes or ten minutes, which means we're down to four. Henry, are you worried that I brought a, a bunch of kids, kids here, a bunch of children? Does this make you uncomfortable? Total. It normally seems have. to be pretty. We don't have this many kids on this floor all Trouble. the time. Cool. Henry, are you saying you want to dance? Got a lot of dance terms. We had dance, dance, mm -hmm. dance earlier. Uh -huh. And nothing. No. Expired. I know. Come on, Henry. How's that word like the Ouija board that I was coming? Bruce? Bruce? I don't know. Bruce? 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 Henry. Free. Any terminology at all. I would like for you to try the middle box that we're using so we can hear your actual voice. You don't have to use the frequencies through the other box. You can use your own voice with the one in the middle. Shark bed. Effort. More here. Others. There's nobody else here. I know you don't like the crowd. We're the only group here. Dialing. Layla. Number one. A whole lot of nothing. She's so young. <gasps> mm. Annoying. Now he's talking about his wife. Radio. Henry, did you want to talk about your wife? April. Not my wife. Your wife. African. I'm not ignoring what you're saying. I'm okay. trying. I, I hear you, I'm just like, nothing's relevant. So. Cross. Henry. Oh yeah. Can you give us an image and we'll call it a night? Give us any image. Cash out any time. <laughs> <laughs> Henry, we'll take one image and we'll call it a night. We'll leave you alone. The sky. The trouble. We're down to about a minute. I'm trying to make a deal here. So much. Any, you I've had terrible. Nothing. 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 Okay, Henry, we're going to call it a night. Can you say good night to us? Bag every gallon. Friday. Ministry and scripture. <laughs> and he had the word cross earlier. I was asking about the church itself, other than just the sounds. Like, I thought it was going to start off good because he actually said listening as soon as I asked about the sounds. 
like, okay, maybe we're gonna have a good story. He likes that word story. That's the third time he's heard it tonight. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Henry, we're gonna say goodnight. Are you okay with that? Alright, Brielle, go ahead and tap him on the knee. I think we're gonna call it. Aiden, go ahead and peel off your headphones. Does anybody else want to check out Aiden's device? Like, those headphones are pretty nuts. Um, before I actually stop the recording, um, well, I kind of, neither one of you get up. No, well, none of you get up. I don't think neither of you. Do I stop this recording? Yes, let's stop your recording.